Hi everybody. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a quiz or assessment where the students will hit a submit button and then it will give them their grade while at the same time hiding the questions and their answers. So the button will be like, okay, you're done. You've submitted. You can't go back and change anything. <laughs> Every time, right? Okay, so let me just show you what this looks like. So I made this real simple here. The answer is one, the answer is two, the answer is three, the answer is four. And then here is the button that is like, okay, you're absolutely sure you're done because you can't go back. And then when they click on that, their score will show up on this next screen. Now you can have this all in one screen here. I have it as two separate. So let me go back and answer this question. Okay, now the teacher can see this, but I don't have any feedback for the students. Now I'm all done. If I, now this is disabled, they can't press it again. Uh, it gives them their score. And then if they try to go back and change anything, it's gone. They can't see anything. They can't even see the questions anymore. So this is a nice way to, you're done. If you want that option, of course. So let's take a look at how we're going to build this. So here I have a brand new one. And of course, I will give the link in the description below so that if you don't want to make this, you just want to grab it, go ahead and grab it. But maybe you want to check out how you change the problems because my problems aren't very engaging right now, unless you're maybe in first grade. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is this will be the screen that has um, a question on it. So I'll put a question and then a spot for their answer. And then the next section, I will add more screens for more questions, but the next section will have the button. And you want to give enough warning because if you've been giving assessments a different way and now you're introducing this like in the middle of the year, you want to make sure that the students understand that once they press that button, that's it. They cannot go back and change anything. Um, so you want to maybe put a note here that tells them a little bit about that. Then the next part will be the score. So I'll put a note component for that as well. Okay. Now, the reason I didn't put up a whole bunch of question screens is because I want to kind of make a template on this first one and then copy and paste it for the rest of my questions. So what I'm going to do here is I want to label the math input. Okay, so I'm going to call this one Math 1, but when I copy and paste it, I'm going to have to change its name to Math 2, Math 3, Math 4. I'm going to do four questions here. Okay, and you want to type in your problem. Mine is 2 plus 3. All right, now I'm going to go into computation layer of the math component. So right here. And the first thing I want to do is let the teacher know if it's correct. So I'm going to call this variable right one. The next one will be right two. Uh, I can't use correct because, well, I could. Um, that's a sink or something. Source, sink, I don't know. Um, where, what do I, okay, so I'm looking at math one and I want to see if the numeric value is equal to five because that's the answer to the question. The question is, what is two plus three? The answer is five. So now for the teacher to get some feedback here, we're going to type in correct, and if right one happens, it'll let the teacher know that the student is correct on that one. The next thing I want to do is let this component know when it should be hidden. Now, what you could do is only hide the answer component if you want, but I like to hide everything. So, hidden will happen Oh, I got to name the button. Let's go and do that quick. I'm going to go to my button screen here and I'm going to name this button. Okay, so back to this screen, back into the computation layer. Hidden is going to happen when the button dot press count is equal to one. Okay, so I'm going to have it set up that once they press that button, it's going to disable. So they can only press it once. Um, so once they press that, this component is hidden. The next thing I want to do is get a score for this problem, okay? And I'm going to call this score one. 
the next screen will be called two. The next screen will be called three. I know I'm so creative, but it helps keep me organized. All right, so when this happens, so that means when they get it correct, they will get, oops, right, one. I'll give them one point. Otherwise, they get nothing. Okay, so if they're correct, they'll get a point. If they're not correct or it's blank, they get a zero. All right, now, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't understand what that submit button is for when you put a math um, input component. If the students press it, the, we get the answer. If they don't press it, we get the answer. And I have students ask me, and they're like, do I have to press the submit button? Or oh, I forgot to press the submit button. It, I get it either way, so I don't even know why it's there. So I'm going to disable that or not show it. So we have show submit button false. I don't even want to see it. And I'm going to do that on all of these. Okay. So that's all I want to do there. Um, oh, yes. Hold on. I'm going to hide the question as well. So this line right here, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put it in every component on the screen. So if you have a whole bunch of components that you want hidden after submission, you want to put that coding in. Okay? So if we preview this quickly, we see that we have that. When I try it, now I could try it more than once, it hides. Okay, so the button worked. I want to copy this and paste it so that I have four questions. There's two, three, four. All right, so now what we're going to have to change here, and you can make as many questions as you want, obviously. You would have to change the question, right? Here, um, one plus six. You also have to change the name of this component. Now you can see we're getting some kind of error message. So in here, I'm going to change this to write two. I'm going to change this to math 2. We have to change this answer. The answer is no longer 5. It's 7. Again, write 2. And here, I want to name this 2. And this has to be 2. Okay, so those are all the things you will need to change here. Now, if this is too confusing for you, maybe you just want to start each of your problem screens from scratch and, and just rewrite all of this. Okay, so let me go through that again quickly with three and four. I'm gonna say one plus one. I'm gonna change this to math three. This would be write three, math three. The answer's two, write three. That would stay, don't change that by accident. Three, three. Okay, and with four, let's go with 10 minus. 3 minus, I should be using a math font here. All right, this is a 4. So this is 4, 4, 7 was the answer. 4, 4, oops, and 4. Okay, so all my problem screens are set up. So that's fantastic. All right, let's go to the screen with the button. So now what I want to do here is give some kind of warning. Wow. I told you about my key sticking, right? Warning, warning, warning. All right. Now I'm going to go into the button computation layer. And what I want to happen is after they click it once, I want it to, like, be disabled. And this is super simple. Disabled is when the button, that was the, what we named it, remember? Um, dot press count is equal to one. So once that happens, it's disabled. Let's check it out. I press it, it's grayed out now, and I can't see anything on the previous screens. All right, last screen here, the screen with the answer. Oh no, I didn't take any notes. Yes, I did, just kidding. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna have to do this from memory. This might be terrible. All right, I'm going into, um, the computation layer, and what I want to do is pull over those variables that I called one, two, three, and four. Okay, and I'm going to just rename them the same thing. So the variable one comes from math1.script1. Two is very similar. Oh my goodness. 
I'm actually a really fast typist, but with these keys sticking, it is messing me up. All right, so all we're doing here is just pulling these um, variables from the other screens. Okay, and now I wanna manipulate them so that we can get a score here. So the score will be equal to the numeric value, and we're gonna put quotation marks in here, and all I wanna do is add those scores together for one, two, three, and four. And remember how we did that when otherwise statement, so if they got it right, it's one, if they didn't, it's a zero. So weird notation one, two, oh, good lord, three, four. Okay. I also want a percent. I'm gonna put a percent in here, and this will be the numeric value. I'm going to open and close quotation marks right away. And what I need to do is take their score, divide it by 4, and then multiply it by 100. So score, total possible points is 4. And when we multiply by 100, we'll get that. All right, here's what I want to show up in my notes. Your score is... And then I'm going to put the score. That will give them the points. So, so many points out of four. That is a percent of, and now let me put the percent, and then the percent symbol, close it with a period, and quotation marks. Now, the way I have it set up right now, it will show up immediately. Like they could just, you know, do problem one to check to see if they got it right. I only want this to show up after they press that button. So this will be hidden when the button doesn't equal one, right? So it's going to be hidden until they press that button. So when button press count equals one, when it when it, they don't press it, this is hidden. When they do press it, then we'll be able to see it. Okay. So let's let's preview this. All right. Here's my score screen. Nothing is showing. Here's that button with the warning, much more wordy than what we have right now. And then here are our questions. So let's answer some of these correctly. Did I, I don't remember changing that one to a seven. Did we do that? And here I'll get this one wrong. I'll add them by accident. Yeah, 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 I am sure. Here we go. Oh, my score is 75%. What did I get wrong? Oh, I'm gonna have to wait for the teacher. And you can see at the top that the teacher's getting this feedback. Now what you could do if you want the students to be able to go back and see the questions and maybe not their answers, um, that's fine. Another thing that we could do, and maybe I'll make a future video on it, is it will show the question and the answer they gave, but the math component will disappear. So we could set up a note component that will say, here was your answer, but they can't change it. So that's kind of interesting too, that they could go back and look. And it would also be nice to have an answer key, uh, like we did in the last video. Once they hit the submit button, they get to see the question, their answer, and the correct answer all on the same screen. So those would be fun things that we could do for this as well. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you want to see any of those things, drop me a comment and uh, I will create a video on how to make that happen those little extra things we talked about here at the end. Have a great day, everybody.